So today, um, tonight actually, I'm going to be talking about NPC bikini prep. Um, I had caffeine a little too late in the day, so 8.37 and I've got tons of energy for this, which is weird on prep, but you'll see why in a minute. So first I'm going to start out with, um, with basically from the beginning of prep. You have to have a muscular foundation. Um, if you haven't lifted or you don't have a lot of muscle mass on your body, then you have to do kind of a pre-prep prep. And that has to do with bulking. So your calories are gonna be higher, you're still gonna be eating really clean, and um, you're just trying to put on weight and you're gonna be lifting all the time. You're gonna feel really good because you get to eat all this food and lift weights. If you like lifting weights, you'll love it. Um, and that just builds a base. You're not gonna see that nice aesthetic look yet because you still have a lot of body fat because you need that body fat in order to build up your muscle. Um, after that bulk, you can start the prep. And usually people start generally between 10 to 16 weeks out from a competition. You can go longer or shorter. Just know it's gonna be easier if you have a longer prep to hone in your body, especially if you're doing it naturally. Um, you're gonna need a lot of time to do it naturally. And um, basically what's involved in prep is extreme dieting. Um, it's not a maintainable diet. You're going to keep decreasing your calories to a point where you're not, you're not gonna feel really good. Your energy's gonna be low. Uh, you're gonna be hungry a lot. Uh, you're gonna get a lot of cravings. Like if you think you have cravings now, wait till you're on prep. You get cravings like crazy. You'll have just eaten a meal and you'll be full, but then you'll think of something that sounds like it tastes really good and you'll crave it even though you don't wanna eat anything else because you just ate a meal. Um, and your diet's gonna be generally really low in carbs depending on how much body fat you need to lose. And you're not going to look amazing every step of the way through prep because of your depletion from carbs. So that's something you've gotta prepare for and it can be mentally tough on you. Uh, another thing is exercise planning. You have to have your exercise planned out. So your splits, you need to know what you need to work on. You're not gonna be putting on muscle at this point since you're at a calorie deficit, but you need to know what areas you need to work on more and figure out a plan throughout your week. And generally your coach is gonna help you do that based on progress picks and how you're feeling and how you're looking. Um, and you need to change it up. Yeah, be consistent with working out, but after a period of time, your body gets used to what you're doing and you start to plateau. So you need to change up your workouts and maybe switch up your split or switch up the way you're training. So instead of doing a lot of sets, low reps and heavier weights, then you switch to high reps, low weight or superset or do drop sets. Change it up so you're throwing your body out of whack so you can improve more with your body. Um, supplements, <laughs> sorry, I can't focus. Supplements, y you generally need more supplements when you're prepping. I mean, people have different opinions about it and certain coaches are gonna have different opinions about different kind of supplements. But um, on prep, you will need more supplements, uh, whether it be protein powder, pre-workout, BCAAs, some sort of vitamins. Um, and a lot of times, actually, steroids are recommended. Um, for bikini competitors specifically, it's not anything crazy. Like generally, bikini competitors don't stick a needle in their butt. So that's like the extreme of steroids. But a lot of times you'll see 
Most bikini competitors use Anavar or Winstrol. I have never used steroids. A lot of people have said that they think I do or asked me if I do and I do not. Um, I know that I have good muscle building genetics and if I push myself hard enough, I can get to a really great limit and I don't think I'm at the edge of my limit yet, so I wanna see how far I can get without using steroids. And it would be awesome if I can become a really competitive pro athlete without using steroids. And so that's one of my goals. Um, I'm not saying steroids are bad and I'm not discrediting people who use steroids because trust me, they work just as hard if not harder and they're pushing their limits even further than a lot of other competitors. So steroids do not devalue someone's progress in, uh, in their muscle gains or in their competition. They still work hard and they still diet like crazy and they still lift really hard. Um, so prep can also change your social life. You're going to be low energy. You have to bring food with you if you wanna go out anywhere. So that's a choice you have to make, whether you just wanna say no to plans or if you want to carry your food around um, and bring your food and eat it at a restaurant with your friends or just always have your food ready because you need to eat a lot during the day, usually five to six meals and have it spread out. Um, so that's one way that it could affect your social life. Another is you're gonna be low energy, so you may not want to hang out with your friends, so you may just turn people down. You're not gonna be wanting to go out late at night because you wanna go to bed by like 10 o'clock, and that's fine, that's good. But I've definitely heard from some of my friends who just stop hearing from some of their friends completely because on prep, you can't drink any alcohol and their friends are going out and partying and drinking and you can't drink. Sometimes you may wanna go along, but you can't drink, but they don't. They may not fully understand that, so they're not going to invite you out anymore. So it can have an, an impact on your social life. I guess those ways were mostly negative. A positive impact is you could be inspiring people and you could be motivating people because that's something that Camille and I actually get a lot. We get told we motivate and inspire people, not only to get into fitness, but just to do everyday tasks that they need to get done because we're working hard doing what we love and working towards our goals, then they see that and they wanna to work towards their own goals. So it's not always a bad thing in your social life and you can still find balance. You don't have to say no to your friends all the time. It's just a matter of you finding what works best for you and with your relationships. And speaking of relationships, this is more for couples, couples and family. Um, it's tensions can raise with the people you're closest with, especially family and significant others, because you're depleted, you're hungry, you want carbs, your hormones are out of whack because you're not fueling your body for maintenance, um, so you tend to snap more often and tend to say things that you wouldn't usually say. So that phrase, I'm sorry for what I said when I'm hungry, is very real during prep. It is so real and I don't think you understand fully unless you go through prep because it gets, I don't think it's something you can prepare for and then you get there and you're in that grumpy, moody spot and you don't know it yet and then you eat a meal and you're like, oh. And then whoever you said something bad to, you look at and you're like, I'm sorry, I just needed to eat. That's literally happened. Like I've literally apologized immediately after eating. Um, I know it sounds funny, but it, it's tough to go through these ups and downs with emotions and relationships, but um, you, you can always make it work. And um, one thing that's hard is everybody doesn't necessarily understand why you're so moody. And um, it's not that you're taking it out on the people you love, that you can't eat what they're eating or enjoy what they're enjoying. It's just that it's 
it's a hard on your body. It's not just just something you can block. It's a physiological reaction in your body that you can't always control. I mean, yes, control it to the best of your ability. I'm not saying go ahead and snap. It's not your fault. But to an extent, it's really hard. And that's another reason why people isolate themselves during prep because they don't want those conflicts and um, they're afraid they'll lose relationships altogether. But um, really, you just gotta find what works for you and find a balance and um, make sure your loved ones know. And if your loved ones really do love you, they're, they're gonna understand uh, to the best of their ability and they're gonna stick around. Um, so lastly, I'm going to talk about uh, my personal experience with prep. So my first show was August 13th, August 13th, 2016. And um, a little less than a year ago from that show date, I got back from Australia weighing the most I ever weighed. I was 150 pounds and I'm 5'5". Five five. And uh, I knew I had to try and get ready for a show because that was my goal when I got back from Australia was to do a bikini competition. And it was, it was a long journey, especially when I got used to eating whatever I wanted. It was really hard to start cutting calories and dieting really hard. So at the beginning of the year from January up until May, I was not fully following my diet. I would still go out and binge eat on occasional weekends with my roommate and it would just be, it was just because we would go out and be out late and I wanted a Cali steak and guac with extra extra sour cream from Taco Bell and we would go out and have that or we'd have a whole pint of Ben and Jerry's. So I wasn't fully ready for prep. Um, I was still mostly following my diet, but stuff like that can really screw you up. And I would accidentally eat way too much peanut butter and I didn't really calculate how many calories that was. Two tablespoons is 200 calories. So when you eat half a jar of peanut butter, that's a lot of calories that you don't have for your diet. Um, so that, that prep was really hard. I actually ended up, my coach told me after my birthday, which was May 15th, that I just had to start over. So I could go have fun for my birthday and we're gonna start over and shoot for August for a show because my plan was originally to do a show earlier. So I was like, okay, start over, clean slate, I'm gonna focus. And it was still really hard to stick to my diet, especially since I was around five other girls in my house who weren't on that diet and so there were temptations everywhere. Um, I was definitely sticking to it a lot better and I think I did well in my competition come August. I placed third, which qualified me for nationals, but I know I can do better and I know I could have done better with my diet and with my prepping, but um, this time around I'm a lot more prepared after having gone through prep and it's a lot easier for me this time for a number of reasons, I think. I am more focused on this prep and more into it because uh, this particular show I feel like is gonna be a really great opportunity and I wanna come in there looking as close to a pro athlete as I can. I know that's gonna take a lot of work over the years to keep building up my physique to where I want it to be, but I wanna come in the best I physically can at this point in my life. So that's really driving me and I'm kind of forcing myself to be motivated and be driven to do better and be better. And it helps living with my fiance, Camille. Like we're both prepping at the same time, so that makes it easier because we're eating the same thing. We don't have crap in the house that can throw us off our diet. Um, it's just, it's a lot easier doing it with someone else and having someone else keep you accountable. Um, and for some reason this time around, my cravings haven't been as bad. I think my metabolism is better because I'm able to eat more calories later in my prep than I was before. Like this sounds like nothing, but right now I'm eating about 13 to 1400 calories per day 
and I'm three and a half weeks out from my competition. Whereas before I was eating just under 1200 calories at this point. So I'm feeling a lot better during this prep physically and, and mentally. Um, but overall this prep is going better and I'm coaching myself this time around. I wanna see how far I can go by myself and see how I can do it by myself. And eventually maybe I'll start coaching others. I feel like that would be really fun. So I'm using myself as a guinea pig at this point. Um, and eventually I'll get to other people and hopefully create some champions. So that's pretty much the basics of prep. I know it's a lot, um, but I mean, there's there's so many more details about prep that I could give you. And if you want to hear more, let me know. Comment below. Uh, you can talk to me on Instagram, Amy Lynn underscore fit if you want. Ask me any questions or ask for more videos or requests. And subscribe to our channel if you like what you see. And we, we really do want to make these videos for you. So please, please let us know what you want to see because we're just going to be saying and doing whatever we want on camera um, until you tell us what you want to see more of. So like, comment, subscribe, 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 and share if you like it. If you want to share it with your friends, go ahead, share it everywhere. Okay, I will see you later.